Microsoft is the second largest technology company in the world, currently valued at $1.8 trillion. The software giant has fueled its 47 years of growth through constant innovation and major acquisitions. A single dollar invested in Microsoft at its 1986 IPO would have turned into $4,179 by the end of 2022. That's with dividends reinvested, of course. This amounts to a total return of 417,800 percent or 25.48% annually. You can just imagine the crazy wealth this created. In fact, of early Microsoft employees with stock, four have become billionaires and at least 12,000 have become millionaires. But can an investment in Microsoft today still build wealth? I certainly think so. Microsoft is the largest holding in my long-term dividend growth stock portfolio. In this video, I'm going to provide a comprehensive overview of Microsoft's current business and explain whether it deserves a place in your investment portfolio. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. You should never invest in a business you don't understand, so today I'm going to provide a full picture look at Microsoft. First, let's recap the company's history. Microsoft was founded in 1975 by childhood friends Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Both had an obsession with computer programming and aspirations in business. Inspired by the January 1975 cover of popular electronics magazine, Gates and Allen developed a basic interpreter for a new personal computing device called the Altair 8800. After striking a distribution deal for the software, Gates dropped out of Harvard and Allen quit his job in order to create Microsoft. The name was an obvious choice for them because they were creating software for microprocessors. So micro soft. By 1980, Microsoft entered the operating system business. They earned a contract from IBM to be its PC's operating system. They created MS-DOS, which would propel Microsoft to become the leading PC operating systems vendor. Paul Allen would resign from Microsoft in 1983 after developing Hodgkin's disease. In late 1985, Microsoft released Windows, which was a graphical user interface for the MS-DOS operating system. This followed the 1984 release of the Apple Macintosh, which first brought this concept to market. This window-based, point-and-click GUI system made personal computers far more accessible to the average person. In 1986, Microsoft became a public company trading under the ticker symbol MSFT. By 1990, they introduced the Microsoft Office suite, which bundled separate applications such as Word and Excel. They would continue to release new versions of these products along with their Windows operating system. In 1985, the company released Windows 95, which featured multitasking, a start button, 32-bit compatibility, and Internet Explorer. Microsoft absolutely dominated the computer operating system market share at this time, especially after Steve Jobs' initial ousting from Apple. This led to a highly publicized antitrust lawsuit arguing the company was a monopoly. The Windows operating system and Office software suite would be the foundational cash cow that fueled Microsoft's growth. On January 13, 2000, Bill Gates handed over the CEO position to longtime Microsoft employee Steve Ballmer. Gates then transitioned to a new role called Chief Software Architect. In 2001, Microsoft released the widely popular Windows XP and Xbox, which was their first move into the video game console industry. In 2009, Microsoft launched the Bing search engine, which failed to seriously compete with Google but gathered valuable data for the company and helped them get into the advertising business. In 2010, they commercially launched Microsoft Azure. Originally designed to help developers deploy apps and databases in the cloud, Azure soon became a core Microsoft service that grew into hundreds of different cloud-based applications. In 2011, Office expanded to the cloud with the introduction of the Office 365 subscription. Also, Microsoft acquired Skype for $8.5 billion that same 
same year. In 2012, they launched the Surface line of tablet PCs. On February 4th, 2014, Steve Ballmer stepped down as CEO of Microsoft and was succeeded by Satya Nadella. Nadella previously led Microsoft's cloud and enterprise division. Satya Nadella would prove to be a fantastic CEO. That year, they purchased the video game Minecraft for $2.5 billion. In 2015, they launched Windows 10. In 2016, they bought LinkedIn for $26.2 billion. In 2017, they launched Microsoft Teams. In 2018, they acquired GitHub for $7.5 billion. On March 13th, 2020, Gates announced that he would be leaving Microsoft's board of directors in order to focus more on his philanthropic efforts. On September 21st, 2020, Microsoft acquired ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion, all cash. On January 18th, 2022, Microsoft announced its intent to acquire Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion, all cash. This transaction is expected to close in mid-2023, but is facing large pressure from regulators. This was all a lot to go over, but it really only scratches the surface of Microsoft's history. The company is quite literally a tech giant and has transformed significantly over the years. In the fiscal year 2022, Microsoft generated $198.27 billion in total revenue. This is up 18% year over year. That same year, Microsoft generated $83.38 billion in operating income, which is up 19% year over year. Their business is broken up into three main segments productivity and business processes, intelligent cloud, and personal computing. For each, I will break down the financials and provide an overview of the business that makes up that segment. Productivity and business processes generate $63.36 billion in revenue, up 18% year over year. This segment earns $29.68 billion in operating income, which is up 22% year over year. The segment comprises of commercial and consumer Microsoft Office 365 subscriptions, LinkedIn, and Dynamics 365. Office is the suite of productivity software Microsoft has provided for decades at this point. It includes Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, OneDrive, Teams, and a growing list of many more applications. If you haven't heard of them, you likely live under a rock. These applications are bundled and sold to consumers, families, small businesses, educators, and large enterprises. Over the past decade, Microsoft has transitioned from licensed on-premises software to the cloud-based 365 subscriptions. This business model provides reliable recurring revenue for the company. Additionally, it removes the problem of users not spending money to up upgrade to newer versions of the software. This was a growing problem as it became more difficult over time to make compelling improvements to the incremental versions. Additionally, this new cloud subscription model allowed developers to focus on supporting one version of the software since most users will be using the same. This is not only a better business model, but a better experience for the end consumer. It allows users to constantly get the most up-to-date software and access their files from any device while creating a growing base of recurring revenue for the company. Office 365 is now being rebranded to Microsoft 365. Microsoft Office, now Microsoft 365, is a huge profit driver for the company. This becomes obvious when you look at the plans they offer. For home, you can spend $69.99 a year as an individual or $99.99 as a family. For business, they offer plans on a per-user basis. For example, their standard business plan is $12.50 per user per month, and their premium version is $22 per user per month. You can just imagine how quickly this revenue scales at corporations with thousands and thousands of employees. According to their fiscal 2022 annual report, Office commercial products and cloud services revenue increased $4.4 billion or 13%. Office 365 commercial revenue grew 18%, driven by seat growth of 14%, with continued momentum in small and medium businesses and frontline worker offerings, as well as a growth in revenue per user. Office commercial products revenue declined 22% by continued shift to cloud offerings. Office consumer products and cloud services revenue increased $641 million, or 11%, driven by Microsoft 365 consumer subscription revenue. 
Microsoft 365 consumer subscribers grew 15% to 59.7 million. Microsoft has transitioned its Office suite to a cloud subscription with a broader set of applications offering reliable, high-margin cash flow for the company. However, the Office suite has faced growing competition. There are alternatives to their various products, and many are free of charge. Most notably, Google has made large moves in this area. They have competing products to most of the Office suite and offer them on Online for free. Also, these services are extremely well integrated into Google Chrome, which is a far more popular web browser than Microsoft's Edge browser. Microsoft does now offer free versions of Office software online, but Google is a real competitor. Personally, I find myself using Google services far more. It's so well integrated into Google Chrome that it's become my default. Even in the writing of this video, I used Google Docs over Word. Despite this competition, Microsoft 365 is growing and will continue to be a cash cow for the company. The products constantly improve and are heavily integrated with each other. This creates a software ecosystem that helps retain customers, especially when combined with the dominance of the Windows operating system for PCs. Also, it cannot be understated the scale and relationship Microsoft has with both users and large enterprises. They've built trust and it's easier to retain and grow that relationship than be disrupted. In fact, Microsoft has shown the ability to develop develop and quickly innovate new features and applications for their bundle. For example, Microsoft Teams has grown to compete with services like Zoom and Slack. This is huge for their business. More recently, they've shown interest in competing with companies like Adobe with their video editor Clipchamp and recently announced Microsoft Designer product. The Microsoft 365 bundle of applications is not going anywhere and if anything will only become larger and more relevant for the foreseeable future. LinkedIn is another big part of this segment for Microsoft. LinkedIn is a social network that connects business professionals and large companies. LinkedIn generates revenue through ads, premium subscriptions, talent solutions, market solutions, and sales solutions. From 2021 to 2022, quote, LinkedIn revenue increased 3.5 billion or 34% driven by a strong job market in our talent solutions business and advertising demand in our marketing solutions business. As of the end of 2022, LinkedIn has 875 million members in more than 200 countries and territories worldwide. Growth will depend on the ability to increase the number of LinkedIn members and to continue offering services that provide value. Microsoft acquired LinkedIn for $26.2 billion and it looks like that will be a success successful investment for the company long term. LinkedIn is unrivaled as the top social network for professionals. It's thought of as boring, but it fits perfectly in Microsoft's business. The third part of this segment is Dynamics. This provides cloud-based and on-premises business solutions for financial management, enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, supply chain management, and other application development platforms for businesses of all sizes. Dynamics revenue is driven by the number of users licensed, expansion of revenue per user, and continued shift to the cloud-based SaaS model of Dynamics 365. Dynamics competes with vendors such as Oracle and Salesforce. Dynamics products and cloud services revenue increased 25%, driven by Dynamics 365 growth of 39%. Microsoft's largest and fastest growing business segment is its Intelligent Cloud. The Intelligent Cloud generates $75.25 billion in revenue, up 25% year over year. This segment consists of their public, private, and hybrid server products and cloud services that can power modern businesses and developers. The service products and cloud services include Azure, SQL Server, Windows Server, Visual Studio, System Center, related client access licenses, Nuance, and GitHub. Enterprise services include Enterprise Support Services, Microsoft Consulting Services, and Nuance Professional Services. This side of Microsoft's business takes a developer-first approach. Developers, 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 developers! This means providing tools to help developers through the entire life cycle of software. Everything is about improving the experience and rate of software development. From the initial writing of code, collaboration, storage, hosting, and a massive offering of cloud services. This part of Microsoft is a massive flywheel for the company. The more tools they provide to make it easier for developers, the more software they can potentially host on their Azure cloud. 
A huge step in this direction was Microsoft's acquisition of GitHub. This is a massively popular code collaboration platform and hosting service for developers. As of 2022, GitHub has over 1 billion in annual recurring revenue and over 90 million active users. GitHub has dominant market share and provides an open platform across any language and any cloud. However, Microsoft hopes that its development and collaboration tools will make you more likely to use its cloud service. The king of Microsoft's intelligent cloud is Microsoft Azure. This is their cloud computing service similar to Amazon Web Services. Microsoft and Amazon have become the dominant players in this massively growing industry. Year over year, Azure revenue is growing at 40%. That's insane growth for such a large business. It's obvious to me that this will fuel a decade of massive growth at Microsoft. Microsoft. Personally, I pay Azure hundreds of dollars every month for hosting and database services related to DividendData.com. So please sign up and become a member. Your support is appreciated. I am just a peanut in this space. There are large enterprises with annual contracts in the billions of dollars. There are so many tailwinds to fuel this growth into the future. Microsoft is so well positioned in this area because of its existing relationship with large enterprises and their on-premises server products. This lets them convert existing customers to hybrid clouds and possibly full cloud users. For individual developers, startups, and small enterprises, cloud services like Azure and AWS are such obvious choices. In the past, tech companies had to worry about purchasing, installing, and maintaining servers. This created huge technical debt that is now abstracted away to these cloud service providers. Just let Microsoft do the work for you and you can focus purely on software development and running your business. Doing just the that happens to move you into plenty of other Microsoft products as well. Microsoft is creating a software flywheel that seems like it will fuel growth for decades to come. The flywheel has the potential to accelerate with the growth of AI. Microsoft has been actively investing in this with its ownership stake in OpenAI. If you know about this company, they've been making massive ways in the past few years with viral projects like Dolly and ChatGPT. The partnership has allowed Microsoft to build GitHub Copilot, which is an AI pair programmer. This suggests and intelligently inserts code to help speed up the programming process. Over the long term, AI has the potential to massively increase the rate of software development powering Microsoft's cloud and developer flywheel. An investment in Microsoft is really an investment in the growth of software development, web applications, data, and supporting all the different businesses that will spawn from that. That said, such a great opportunity will meet harsh competition. Azure faces formidable competition from companies such as Amazon, Google, IBM, Oracle, VMware, and open source offerings. They are currently second behind Amazon Web Services in market share, and those two are the clear leaders by far. Google Cloud is a distant third, but it will likely find a meaningful market position. The final segment of Microsoft's business is more personal computing. This is their smallest, lowest margin, and slowest growing business segment. In 2022, personal computing generated $59.65 billion in revenue, up 10% year over year. Operating income was $20.97 billion, which is up 8% year over year. The personal computing segment includes Windows, Surface devices and accessories, gaming, and search. Windows is the operating system you've likely used many times. Among desktop computers, computers, it controls 75% market share with a gigantic lead over competitors. Among all devices, it controls over 29% market share behind only Android. Windows is mainly broken between OEM revenue and commercial revenue. Windows OEM revenue is impacted significantly by the number of Windows OS licenses purchased by original manufacturers which they pre-install on the devices they sell. Think of Dell, HP, etc. Windows commercial revenue includes volume licenses licensing of the Windows operating system and Windows cloud services such as Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection. In 2022, Windows revenue increased $2.3 billion or 10%. Microsoft's search and news advertising business is mainly comprised of Bing and Microsoft advertising. In 2022, revenue increased $2.3 billion or 25%. Search and news advertising revenue, excluding traffic acquisition cost, increased 27%, driven by higher revenue 
revenue per search and search volume. Gross margin increased $3.1 billion, or 10%, driven by growth in Windows and search and news advertising. Bing has obviously lost the search war to Google, but it's been gaining market share in recent years. Bing's market share is 8.88%, which is up 3% in the past two years. I expect this will slowly climb as they differentiate the experience and grow users on the Microsoft Edge browser. This advertising business has the potential to grow significantly over time, and it seems to be a strategic focus. Microsoft acquired Xander, which is a television ad technology company previously owned by AT&T. Additionally, they struck a major deal to be the exclusive advertising technology and sales partner for Netflix. This has the potential to grow into a big market for the company but it's very early right now. Microsoft Gaming includes Xbox hardware, content, and services. This comprises of first and third party games, Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Live, Xbox Cloud Gaming, third party disc royalties, advertising, and other cloud services. Gaming revenue increased $860 million, or 6%, on a strong prior year comparable that benefited from Xbox Series X and S launches and the stay at home scenarios driven by growth in Xbox hardware and Xbox content and services. Xbox hardware revenue increased 16% due to continued demand for Xbox Series X and S. Xbox content and services revenue increased 3% driven by growth in Xbox Game Pass subscriptions and first-party content offset in part by a decline in third-party content. The future of Xbox is as a platform, not a console. Microsoft realizes this and has been transitioning Xbox towards this future. Xbox revenue mainly consists of subscriptions and sales of first and third-party games. Historically, Xbox Live has been the cash cow. This allows you to play games online with friends for a monthly subscription. However, they have been pushing a transition to a newer service called Xbox Game Pass. This subscription offers access to a library of over 100 games you can download and play. This is a far more cost-effective way to try out and play various games. Xbox is treating this service with the highest priority. They are offering tons of high-quality games and trying to get new games on the service at the same day of their launch. This service is also expanding to offer cloud gaming where you can stream games directly to your Xbox console, PC, phone, or tablet. Over the long term, this will obviously be the future of gaming, making it more accessible to more devices and removing the need for a powerful device and the downloading of games. Xbox is well aware that these streaming services will be the future of gaming. The business model will be more similar to Netflix and Disney Plus than anything else. They will need to focus on exclusive games and having constant engagement to reduce churn. So you know what that means. Content is king. In the past, this has been a weaker area of Xbox. Compared to PlayStation and Nintendo, they had far less exclusive first-party games. Microsoft has been focusing to make sure they improve in this area. Over the past few years, Xbox has been building their first-party games through Xbox Game Studios. In 2014, they acquired Mojang Studios, who created Minecraft. In 2018, they made a slew of acquisitions. They bought Undead Labs, who created the game Stay of Decay. That actually used to be one of my favorite games, so I think this development team is widely talented. Talented. They bought Playground Games, who creates the popular Forza Racing series. They also acquired Obsidian Games, who makes high-quality RPG games like Outer Worlds. Other 2018 acquisitions included Studios Ninja Theory, In Exile Entertainment, and Compulsion Games. In 2019, they bought Double Fine Productions, which has made popular games like Psychonauts. In 2020, they acquired Zenimax Media for about $7.5 billion. This blockbuster deal got them top-notch video game studios and major franchises. This includes Bethesda Game Studios, who makes Fallout and the Elder Scrolls series, id Software, who makes Doom, Wolfenstein, and Quake, Arcane Studios, who makes Dishonored and Prey, Machine Games, who has made the newer Wolfenstein games, and so much more. On January 18th, 2022, Microsoft announced its intent to acquire Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. This transaction is expected to close in mid-2023, but is facing large pressure from regulators. Activision Blizzard owns iconic game franchise franchises like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Diablo, Overwatch, and mobile games like Candy Crush. This is a huge and obvious signal that Xbox knows content ownership will be incredibly important in the next era of gaming. Consoles will become less and less relevant with games being all that matters. The devices section includes Microsoft Surface line and PC accessories. Surface is designed to be a flagship line for Windows where Microsoft can highlight what a Windows PC can be. It started with their tablet PC form factor in the Surface Pro. 
After a slow start, this has become very popular. I've used one and I genuinely like it. Over time, the Surface line has expanded to include various laptops, tablet PCs, and desktops. The quality and care Microsoft has put into building this brand makes me think they can genuinely compete with not only other Windows manufacturers, but even Apple. I think Surface is here to stay and will be a growing part of Microsoft into the future. In 2022, Surface revenue increased $226 million, or 3%. As I mentioned earlier, the personal computing segment is the slowest growing and lowest margin business. In 2023, I see growth being slow as this is the segment most impacted by macroeconomic conditions. Here is Microsoft's revenue classified by significant product and service offerings. An interesting observation here is that their two largest revenue segments also happen to be the fastest growing. That seems like a recipe for success. So by now you should have a good understanding of Microsoft's current business. If you couldn't tell already, Microsoft is an absolute powerhouse of a company. Now I'm going to analyze the stock of Microsoft from the perspective of a long-term investor. To do so, I will be using the stock research tool I developed, which is available at DividendData.com. I would definitely recommend you check it out if you find the data valuable. Microsoft. Ticker symbol MSFT is priced at $245.12 per share with 7.45 billion shares outstanding, giving it a current market value of $1.827 trillion. Earnings per share over the trailing 12 months is $9.65. At the current price, this gives it a PE ratio of 25.4. The forward-looking annual dividend is $2.72 per share. At the current price, this is a dividend yield of $1.11. As you can see, Microsoft's price has risen significantly over the past decade. The stock price has fallen around 30% from its all-time high. Personally, I'm using this as a buying opportunity. If we look at Microsoft's annual balance sheet, you can see that they have $104 billion in cash on hand. With $61.2 billion in total debt, this puts them at negative $43.4 billion in net debt. This makes Microsoft a cash-rich company. They also generate extremely reliable, growing, recurring cash flows. In 2022, Microsoft generated $89 billion in operating cash flow and $65.14 billion in free cash flow. This past year, Microsoft paid $18.1 billion in dividends and repurchased $32.7 billion in common stock. This is all very sustainable as the company is a cash cow with a rock-solid balance sheet. Now I'm going to look at their financial metrics on a per-share basis. Basis. Over the past five years, revenue per share is growing at a 17.9% compound annual growth rate. This growth seems to be accelerating, which is unique for such a large established company like Microsoft. Over the past three years, net income per share is growing at a 23.8% compound annual growth rate. In that same time, free cash flow per share is growing at a 20.35% compound annual growth rate. In 2022, Microsoft generated $8.69 in free cash flow per share, up 16.88% from 2021. Over the past 10 years, the compound annual growth rate is 9.55%. I think that is a conservative estimate to project forward. However, I think it's likely this is exceeded given the growth of Azure and Microsoft 365. As I mentioned earlier, Microsoft is a high margin business with 68% gross margins and 36.69% net margin. Here you can see that Microsoft has $173 billion in shareholder equity and negative $46 billion in net debt. Since 2004, Microsoft has been consistently buying back shares at a high rate. This increases your relative ownership stake as a shareholder. On top of this, Microsoft pays a quarterly dividend that has been growing at a high rate for 18 consecutive consecutive years. Over the past 10 years, the compound annual growth rate of the dividend is 11.99%. Their most recent dividend increase is 9.68%. Based on the growth of their free cash flow and earnings, I'd expect this growth to continue well into the future. Their dividend payout ratio is 25%, which is incredibly sustainable. When looking at Microsoft's business, there is very little to complain about. It's an absolute powerhouse. In my opinion, Microsoft hits one of Charlie Munger's favorite qualities in a business. It drowns in cash. He explains this idea in the following clip. We tend to prefer the business which drowns in cash. It just makes so much money that the main, one of the main principles of owning it is you have all this cash coming in. There are other businesses like the 
construction equipment business of my old friend John Anderson. And he used to say about his business, you work hard all year, and at the end of the year, there's your profit sitting in the yard. There was never any cash, just more used construction equipment. We tend to hate businesses like that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to understand a business that's mailing you a check every month. Microsoft is a prime example of a business that drowns in cash. It's a high margin software business that scales far faster than its costs and provides reliable subscription revenue. This money just keeps piling up into Microsoft headquarters, padding their impressive balance sheet. Microsoft then uses this money to reward shareholders with buybacks and dividends. Additionally, all this cash gives them the ability to make important strategic acquisitions without debt. This puts Microsoft in such a dominant position. Money just keeps piling up and the rate of it keeps increasing. In my opinion, Microsoft is one of the highest quality companies you can buy. I've been buying more of the stock and have actually made it my largest position in my long-term dividend growth stock portfolio. I own 94.33 shares at a cost per share of $244.30. This gives it a total value of $23,123. I will continue to add to my Microsoft stock position on price declines and dollar cost average over the coming years. There may be plenty of price volatility over the coming months with the expected 2023 recession and the possibility of the Activision Blizzard acquisition being blocked. I will use both of these as buying opportunities to continue increasing my ownership stake in Microsoft. In fact, I hope the price declines. The cheaper, the better. So that's my plan for buying Microsoft stock, but don't take my advice blindly and be sure to do your own research before making any investment decisions. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more stock review videos. Please sign up for DividendData.com to use my in-depth stock research tool. You can also follow me on Twitter for breaking dividend news, updates on my buy slash sells, and all my dividend payments coming in. Thanks for watching.